do, 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 do. Are we live? I don't know. Are we live? Are we live? There we go. What's up, everybody? It's Tuesday, so you get to listen to me talk. What are we talking about today? Let's see if anybody's popped on yet. Nobody, I'll give you a couple minutes. All right, we got things loaded here. We got three viewers I'm showing, but again, not, oh, we got a comment. Barb, what's up? How goes it? And Jen and Cindy, what's up, ladies? All right, so we got we got viewers. That means I can start talking. Even if we didn't have viewers, I would probably still talk anyways. Hey, Renee, what's going on? Hey. All right. Um, we are going to talk today about that thing, and only you know what that thing is. That thing that is the one thing you know you probably should change, but you just don't want to. We've all got it. We've all got it. Okay. Uh, for me, I know. I just use myself as, as an example because I'm the best example of myself, in my own life. Okay. For me, I know for a fact two things. I got two of them, actually. Only one of them is a big one. The other one's kind of just an eh. But that's where you have to decide for yourself. Is this a big thing that's really preventing me from getting where I'm going? Or is this something that I know it could take me to a next level or move forward, but it's not something that's going to be so dramatic in my life that I'm willing to change. Okay. This is all stuff we just we're just going to talk about ideas. You have to figure out where you fall into the spectrum. Okay. So for me, big thing, dairy. I love cheese. The problem with cheese for me is I can't just eat a little. Okay. If I go to the if I go to the store and I get cheese, I'm getting literally, guys, this is this is this is no lie. I cannot go to the store and get less than two pounds of cheese. Right. And it's probably going to be gone in less than a week and a half. OK, because I will put cheese on everything. I'll put it in my eggs. I'll put it on my meat. I'll, I'll, it'll go everywhere. I'll just sit there and eat it. Whatever. OK, I love American cheese, American cheese in particular. Um, if I get here's the thing, if I I don't really enjoy other cheeses, how weird is that? Like I like American cheese the most. OK, and Boar's Head American cheese is like literally the best cheese out there. It's like cheese culture whey milk and salt or something like there's not there's nothing in it it's crazy uh it's not processed it's none of the bad stuff if you're looking for cheese uh if you like american cheese that's the cheese to get boards at it's a little more expensive but it's so good um for yeah for me it's cheese like i can't and, and when i eat cheese um my digestion is not as good and i struggle keeping my fat under control because cheese is really fatty i normally don't like if i'm not eating cheese i don't normally have to track i can just kind of eat whatever most of what i eat is one-to-one -one or better and it's not that big of a deal when i throw cheese into the mix i have to like literally get the calculator out and start going fine detail and looking at every little thing that i'm doing and it's not worth the effort at most times um so I have to make a decision for me, and I kind of have decided that I like cheese enough that I'll that I that I do cycles. So for me, and the way that I maintain my progress and still allow myself to enjoy cheese is I'll do uh, a, like a week or two of cheese, and then I'll go a month or two without it, um, and then I'll go a week or two with it with, and then I'll go a month or two without it. So. I kind of cycle it in and out to kind of, I'll go through a phase where I'm like, you know what? I really could use some cheese. I really want some cheese. I miss it. And then I'll go get some. Um, but I don't let that progress to the point now because now I know if I go for longer than, than a week or two, then it's going to start affecting my body composition. It's going to start affecting how I feel. And I don't want to get to that point. So then I cut it out again and go back to there. Right. So I've, I've, tested i've kind of played around with what works and i know uh, where i'm at with that so one of the things to think about for yourself is um do you have something that you are you first off 
Are you in a place where you feel like you're stuck? If you feel like you're stuck, then it's time to evaluate a couple of things. And the things that you want to evaluate, your activity level, there's the three main things you want to evaluate. Your activity level, your nutrition, and your recovery time. Some of you listening know who I'm talking to, okay? Carla, what are you sorry about? Oh, you can't. <laughs> you keep mixing up my first and my last name. That's okay. Jennifer, what are you hiding for? I can see the comments. This is so awesome. I love all cheese, Renee. Yes, cheese was my comfort food. Cheese, cheese, everybody loves cheese. Cheese is so amazing, right? Oh, I love being able to see things. Heavy cream, Jen, that's a good one. That's a big one. A lot of people get stuck on heavy cream, right? We think it's, oh, it's great, it's fat. Um, there, you know, that actually kind of brings up another thing. But, you know, I said there's uh, your nutrition, there's your exercise, your activity level, and then there is your recovery level as three things to kind of look at if you're stuck. One of the other things to look at and to kind of think about across all three of those, because it affects all three, is your mindset. How are you thinking about your nutrition? How are you thinking about your activity level? How are you thinking about your recovery routine um, and time off and resting and things like that? Because your mindset is what's going to control those things. And if you are stuck, it's possibly how you're thinking about that. So heavy cream is a great example. A lot of people think that they need heavy cream because they need the fat. So learning and educating yourself, education, guys, is the number one way to break a plateau. It, it's not something that you think about. It's a mindset thing. It, it's not tweaking your nutrition. It's not necessarily recovering more. It's not necessarily exercising more or doing more resistance training and less cardio. Those are all the actions that you take after you change what's in, in here. After you understand and educate yourself as to why what you're doing isn't working, then you can determine what the actions you need to take are to see the, the change in the direction you want to go, right? Right, so when we talk about heavy cream is, is, is one, everyone thinks keto is high fat, I need heavy cream every day, when in reality, that's probably something that's keeping some of you back, right? You're getting too much fat, so you're not able to burn the fat on your body. Um, Jen, you got stress, you just, you said stress is something that's a stumbling block, that's, that's absolutely correct. Stress is one of those things that we we put on ourselves a lot of times. So very often we stress ourselves out over things that we really shouldn't or don't need to. We let work stress us out. We let family stress us out. We put additional things on our plate that we, we need to learn how to say no. That's a mindset thing. Learn how to say no. You don't have to say yes to everybody. Um, learn how to let things go that you can't control. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a mental, that's a mindset thing as well. And then that's a thing that actually has a physiological representation in stress, raising cortisol, increasing inflammation, which leads to your body fat, your body holding on to body fat, right? The higher cortisol, the higher inflammation in your body, your body wants to hold on to the fat, okay? Uh, when we talk about the specifics of, uh, let's start with nutrition. Nutrition, there's a lot of different things. When it comes to nutrition and mindset, uh, everybody struggles with something. Everybody's got, I don't know anybody that doesn't have at least one thing that they struggle with. For me, it's cheese. Um, I know people who will change absolutely everything about the way that they eat, but they have to have their diet soda or they have to have their chocolate or they have to have their pizza once a week, or whatever it may be right? It's just everybody's got that one thing. At some point in time, you are going to get to a place where you have to decide, do I want to make more progress or am I happy where I am? And if I'm happy where I am, then you're good. Now, here's the thing. Here's the, here's the kicker. Here's kind of the, the part that stinks, but it's awesome. If you are happy where you are, you have to understand that you need to still find a way to improve somewhere else. Happy where you are does not mean you stop trying to make yourself a better person, a healthier person, 
a stronger person, a friendlier person, um, a smarter person, whatever it is. Okay, there has to be. There absolutely has to be in some aspect of your life. We're totally segueing right now. There has to be in some aspect of your life something that you are working on to make yourself better. Because if you are not working to make yourself better, the only thing that you're doing is dying. If you're not growing, you are dying. Okay? So you can be content physically. But that doesn't mean that's everything. There's a mental, there's an emotional, there's a social, there's a spiritual, there's a lot of different aspects to your life and your circle and your and your psyche and all that kind of stuff. So if you feel like, hey, my nutrition is where, I, where I'm at, where it is, my health is where it is, my fitness is where it is, I'm going to maintain, that's fantastic, right? I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to keep eating cheese. Like for me, if I, I'm happy where I am. I'm strong. I'm fit. I can exercise. I look good. I feel good. You know, whatever. Um, I like cheese. I'm going to keep eating cheese. Okay, cool. I need to look at something else. Is there a, a, a course that I can take? I want to be a better coach. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better son. I, I want to be smarter. I want to learn a hobby. There, there's got to be something that I want to expand and grow on. Otherwise, I just start to live a little bit. And okay, we have to have that challenge, guys. So it's okay to be okay with where you are. Don't be okay with where you are across the board. There's always got to be something, okay? Um, let's see. Uh, oh, we got a bunch of comments here. Let's see. Kicking over. Decision, Kim, you're at that decision point. What is your decision point? If you don't mind sharing, Kim, what is the point you're at? Maybe we can help you. Uh, Non-exercise is holding me back. Don't know how to start with all the health issues. Six years. Carla? Um, I highly recommend the new program I just put out. I don't know if you saw it. If body weight and bands only, whatever health issues you have, we can try to work with it. If you want to send me a message, I will work with you directly to try to see how we can get you started with that, okay? I think that would be a great way for you to get started. It'll be a program that it will give you, tell you exactly what to do, and you can just kind of follow along uh, with all the other people that are doing it. Uh, Jennifer asked the question, when you decided to start working out to change your body composition, how long did it take for you to gain momentum or when did the switch finally flip? Ooh, I think the switch flipped when I got started. Uh, the switch flipped and then I got started after the switch flipped. Um, there have been levels of progression where I started. So for me, I didn't just start and go hog wild. For me, the first thing I changed was uh, stopping to eat French fries. I think I may have told the story before. The first thing I changed was I just stopped eating French fries. I didn't change anything else. I still went to all the same places. I still did the same workout routine, which wasn't really a workout routine. Uh, and I just stopped. I was just like, the one thing that I know I can handle, even though I love them, I love French fries. Uh, the one thing I can do is not eat French fries. I think in the last... <coughs> Eight years, I've probably ate, eaten French fries maybe four or five times because I just don't eat them anymore. I just don't. I, I don't order them. I don't get them. There have been a couple of times where I forgot to say, hey, no fries. And they came. And I was like, yeah, screw it. I'll eat them. Right. Uh, but for the most part, I don't eat. I, I don't. I don't eat them. And that was step number one. Step number two was moving to. Uh, I started realizing, hey, this is actually helping me feel better, things like that. Step number two was removing bread and processed, you know, carbs and that kind of stuff. Uh, then it was going to all whole, whole foods. Then it was more, um, you know, uh, low carb, no sugar. Uh, then it was carnivore all the way. So over a process, over a period of six years, I made a bunch of different changes in levels as I went. Baby steps. Yes, baby steps. Um, but here's the thing. Taking baby steps is a great way to stick with something because you see progress. You can then make the next jump. We, I'll be honest with you. I said everybody has one thing that gets you stuck. In reality, we probably have three, four, five, six, seven, eight things that get us stuck. Right? We don't realize what some of those other things are until we get rid of the one thing that's in front of our face. Right? There's one thing in front of our face. We have to deal with do we want to get rid of that or not. We get rid of it. We move forward. And then eventually we'll bump into something else. That's a roadblock. We have to go through the same process over again. It's a never ending process, guys. Just keep pushing through. Okay. Uh, let's see here. 
Janice, you have the body. You don't need the bands. If you can wiggle your toes and wiggle your hands, you can do the workouts. Wine, Renee, wine is your thing, huh? Um, that's okay. I mean, we understand. Knowing, remember, guys, it's all about knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge, knowing is half the battle, G.I. Joe, right? Um, you know what it does. When you get to that point, you can say to yourself, this is what happens when I do it. This is where I want to go. Do those things match up? Pick one or the other. It's really that simple. The one thing, I, the, the one thing, one of the things I want you guys to understand is there's no right or wrong. There is nothing about anything that we're talking about today that is based in what you are allowed or not allowed or what is um, what is keto or what is not keto, or what is carnivore or what is not carnivore. This has nothing to do with labels. This has nothing to do with rules. This is simply where do you want to go? Take the time to learn about the thing that you want to change and what it's going to do or what it's doing to you and then make a decision for you, not based on anybody else, on what anybody else is doing. Learn about the science behind it. Learn about the changes and the effect it's having on your body and then decide for yourself. You are the only person that's got, you've got to live with your life, not us, not me, nobody else. So what anybody else thinks about it has absolutely no impact on what you decided to do for yourself. Okay. Um, I'll set a new goal once I reach one. I don't stay motivated. Yes, you got to set goals, guys. And again, it doesn't always have to be a fitness goal. It can be a relationship goal. It can be a work goal. It can be an education goal. It can be something. Yes. The more you change, the more you change. Isn't that awesome? I love it, Cindy. Jennifer, oh, you're a year ahead of me. Right? But we feel so, I don't feel 50. I'll be 49 at the end of May. I'll be 49 at the end of May. I don't feel it. Sweets or sweet tasting food, Teresa? Yeah, um, not so much. I've never been like a candy person. Uh, it's just uh, cheese, man. It gets me every time. A rockin' bod. You got it, Jennifer. Goal, goal, goal set, challenge accepted, right? Could I talk about my new beginner class a little bit? Sure, absolutely. Um, and this is actually one of the ways that I want to help you guys get rid of an obstacle. There's something in the way a lot of times people uh, have that fear of or just not understanding or knowing where to get started, how to get started. The new program. I missed your question. Wait, hold on. Well, let me talk about this, Renee, and then I'll go back, ask your question again, and I'll try to I'll try to get back to it. Um, the new program is body weight and bands only. So all of the movements you can do without really getting anything, even if you don't have bands, I can give you some things to do. Um, but bands are really good to uh, add that little extra um, from a movement and then an option for movements that I can give you. You can't do everything with body weight. There's a couple of things you need some external source of resistance. So that's where the bands come in, but they're super easy to use um, and they can make a huge difference in what we're trying to do for you, okay? It's based in the same concepts and methodology as my regular Apex program, which uses dumbbells and kettlebells um, and body weight and bands. All right. But it's going to be done in such a way that you're going to you're going to get one set of workouts for the whole month. OK, and here's the here's the thought process behind that. I'm going to give you three workouts a week. So a workout one, a workout two and a workout three. You're going to repeat those workouts for the whole month. So every week you have the same set of three workouts. OK, that's going to do two things for you. It's going to help you learn and figure out what the scales and modifications you need to use are. It's going to help you apply those through the first couple of weeks and then get used to them as you go. So you have to, you don't have to second guess every single workout. What am I going to do this time? You can work it out week, week one and then the rest of the month, you know what you're doing. Your setup time is easier. Your ability to do the workout is faster. You don't take as long because you're, you're used to it. And you understand the movements. Okay. That does. Actually, it's three things. That does a second thing. It helps you learn how to do the exercises so that when we go to the next month, 
we're going to repeat some of those same movements so you don't have to relearn them again. Okay, so it's repetition, it's education, and it's understanding what is going to work for you. All right, the, set, the last thing it's going to do for you is it's going to give you a mark at the beginning of the month, and then it's going to give you that same, same workouts by the end of the month. So you should see dr dramatic improvement every single month. So you'd start the workouts on week one, you do the same workouts all the way through by the end of week four or five, depending on the month, you're gonna do that workout. You should be way better in the fourth week than you were the first week. So every single month, you kind of benchmark yourself and you get a chance to see improvement month to month to month to month, okay? So that's really what it's all about. It's three workouts. I would highly recommend you do them three, just do one, just do one, it work out one, workout two, workout three, and then you're good. The other four days of the week, if you want to do something else, go for a walk, go for a hike, play with your kids. If you want to do, if you have a, a treadmill, if you have an elliptical, if you want to do that kind of stuff, that's perfectly fine. Um, but you don't need to be working out five, six, seven days a week. Okay. I would recommend if you do three days of these exercises and then maybe one day of some other kind of hike or walk or cardio or jog or something like that, then you'll be perfectly fine. I think four days a week is perfectly fine if you're if you're at a point where this is a good workout for you. Okay. The workouts are structured. You're gonna have a warm-up. You're gonna do usually about a 15 or 20 minute um, program of, of conditioning and strength together. And then there's gonna be a cool down. Okay, so there's three pieces: warm-up, the exercise, the workout, and then a cool down every single day. Okay. So I hope that answers any questions. If you have any more questions, just ask. Um, is it online with you or you know, it's on your own time, Janice. So what you do is you subscribe to it. You get an app that you get, a, you get a link to an app to download. You'll subscribe to the workouts in the app and then right in the app, it's going to give you your workouts, um, show you what they are. There's videos, explanations, everything that you need to, to do the workouts. Um, I do a video. If you look in the group from a couple of days ago, you'll see that I did a video where I actually summarize so every for this for this program every month I'll be summarizing here's the workouts that you're going to be doing this month and I'll walk you through what the workout is and how to do it as well. So the app will have individual movements. There will also be a link in there that will go to the summary video that I do that explains what all the exercises are. So if you have any questions, it should answer 99% of the questions. And if you have any more, we can just ask. Okay. Um, Let's see. I hope that answered your question, guys. Okay, Renee, classic question. Um, I don't know. I, I hate to tell you that. I don't know. The Everybody's different. I don't know how your body is going to respond. I don't know what your body fat percentage is, what your, your lean mass in pounds is. You may, you may feel different. Your clothes may fit different. You may not look different for a while. You may look different next week. I have no idea. There's absolutely no way to tell. The biggest thing that you can do to see if you're making progress, particularly when it, with what's, what you're doing fitness-wise, is to track the numbers. So in the app, you can put the, the weights that you're using, how fast you're doing workouts and things like that. That's probably the first thing, excuse me, probably the first thing you're gonna see where there's some changes. You're using heavier weight. You're doing exercises faster. The exercises feel better. You understand how to do them. You can move your body better. They don't feel as complicated or as clunky. Okay. If you looked at the uh, article that I posted earlier this morning, okay, you start feeling virtuous in your movement, right? Virtuosity, the, the quality of movement. Things start feeling like you understand and you know what you're doing. Okay. Um, so that's probably the first thing that you're going to notice as you go through a program. The next thing you'll notice is, you know, how you feel, more energy, your clothes start fitting differently, things like that. And then usually is when you start going, oh, hey, I can see my muscle. Oh, I can see my abs. Oh, I can, my butt's looking a little rounder or whatever it may be. Okay. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Um, just keep trying to, to, to track your performance because performance is going to improve oftentimes before your body composition or how you look changes, okay? Hope that answered your question. You can watch, yes, so Janice, all of the videos for the movements in the app are hosted on YouTube. So when you're in the app, 
if it says do um, a squat, then you can click on the, the set of the set of videos there, click on the, the button for squat, and it will show you a video of how to do the movement. But all of that stuff is in the app, but it kind of goes through YouTube on the back end. And if you guys are ever curious about any of the movements, I have almost 300 movements um, in a library on my on my YouTube. You can always go look at those on your own. I have a, uh, an exercise and movement library that's got all the movement videos for everything. All right, so that's uh, that's that, guys. Everybody's got one thing. Focus on how your mindset, what your mindset is around your nutrition, your exercise, and your recovery. Okay, and remember that you, even if you get to a point where you feel like you're 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 done, you're content, you're happy. There's got to be something else. Transfer that energy of growth into something different so that you don't stagnate and die. We don't want that. We want you to grow, become a better, right? Big butterfly is what we're looking for. Uh, and remember that the process never stops. Once you get to that point where you get an obstacle and you, you know, you bust through it, you figure out what it is, you make a change to be better, you're going to come up against something else because your mindset is always growing. The more we grow, the more we change, the more we have to grow and change again, okay? That's fine. It's part of the process. It's what makes you a better, healthier, stronger, more well-rounded individual. Okay. So I hope that was good for you guys. Um, anybody have any questions? Yay, Jennifer. Woohoo. Mother's Day gift. Awesome. I love it. Um, everybody, welcome Jennifer to the app. She's going to be doing some workouts. Ooh, get it. All right, guys. Take it easy. I will see you in the group. If you have any other questions, please, please, please post them. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Take it easy.